Alternative credit encapsulates you know, quite a range of different products um, that we're seeing in today's market. Alternative credit gives investors access to debt instruments, which is um, in turn perceived to be a lower risk type of investment strategy. Typically, they're looking, they're, they're attracted to this because lower, lower risk, but also because there's typically a current yield component, um, which is a huge differentiator from private equity or you know, typically opportunistic real estate. Typically, the alternative credit managers with whom we're working will, will be very focused and niche in their approach. So they'll be looking at, you know, a specific um, country or a specific sector and can really roll up their sleeves and find kind of interesting um, opportunities that are less available in public markets. So um, we think that there is uh, a reward associated with um, going into the weeds and finding unique um, situations that might be less obvious to, to most investors. That reward comes in, in the form of, of course, a, a higher return. Let's think about it as though an investment banking uh, organization comes, uh, comes out and has an offering on a, on a particular bond deal. And let's say the terms of that deal are, I'll make it up, 6% uh, coupon with a 15-year maturity as a bullet or some non-callable instrument. Why would I pay 6% for that bond when I can buy this particular security or this particular alternative investment for 11% and I don't see a dramatic difference in terms of the credit quality. The 6% issuer is generally a corporate issuer that is history, and it has securities that they have underwritten during the life cycle of that particular company. And so there's histories that you can go back to and you can see where they've been able to issue and the reasons for their ability to issue. It's probably most related to their credit rating, whereas a, an alternative doesn't have a rating. So it's effectively a private security. When you have a private security, it implies that that company doesn't necessarily have the ability to go into the public markets and finance at 6 or 8% or whatever the appropriate number is. Yet if you put it side by side, there aren't great differences to it. The analysis is the same. In the post-financial crisis era, we're seeing um, a lot of opportunity for credit managers. And this is uh, principally because banks have stopped lending in the you know, traditional prolific way that they had done in the lead up to the financial crisis of, kind of 2008. And I think banks have come back, um, but we're seeing less so in the middle market space or in nichier spaces or in hard to figure out situations. Um, so some managers that we're seeing um, have been you know, particularly successful in the middle market where banks just have found it to be less profitable to lend to companies. Um, and a, a manager can lend to a, um, a middle market company, a family company, a high growth company that's in great financial shape, but just can't access bank lending. Typically, we would see maybe three years at the very minimum for um, a close-ended fund, up to maybe five or eight years. Mm -hmm.